serverless computing. The very useful tool that lots of developers seem to dislike. But first, what is serverless computing? Well, it's definitely not serverless. It's a form of cloud computing where the cloud providers are the ones managing the infrastructure, allowing the developers to focus on writing the code instead of managing servers. It's serverless because the servers are abstracted away from the developers, which makes scaling a project so much easier. And it's really useful if you're a developer that wants to deploy your project quickly and avoid the headache that comes with managing your own infrastructure. All of the big cloud providers offer serverless services, whether that's database, storage, functions, and more. So why don't developers like serverless? And why is the internet at war with it? Well, there have been a number of high profile incidents over the past few months and years where developers have reported being charged excessively high fees for their serverless usage. As I mentioned earlier, one of the reasons why serverless is so loved is because it's easy to scale. And by easy, I mean automatic. So when your project experiences a popularity boom or you're hit with an attack that you're not protected from, instead of your infrastructure hitting a bottleneck and your application slowing down, which is what would happen if you're using more of a traditional method of hosting your project, your infrastructure infinitely scales to be able to cope with the new traffic. The good news is that your startup's website never went down, but the bad news is that now you've got a bill that you owe to your cloud provider that's the size of a salary. Just to be clear, all of the bigger cloud providers offer services that enable you to protect your resources from attacks, as well as manage your billing in the form of alerts and even spending caps. However, some of the smaller, more developer-facing or smaller company-facing providers out there, I'm not going to name any names, <coughs> They didn't have these features until this sort of thing became a real big problem. And just to be clear, when I say became a problem, I don't mean the first time this happened to someone. I mean the first time that one of these customers who was on the receiving end of one of these extortionate bills decided to post it online and it was seen by hundreds of thousands or even millions of people. So this was really more of a PR move than a let's help our developers move. So how could these developers have seen into the future and stopped this from happening? Before we continue, I did some research and found that only 10% of the people that are watching my videos are actually subscribed to me. And that blows my mind. If you're enjoying this video so far and you're not subscribed, please do consider hitting the subscribe button below. Back to the video. Number one, you should automate billing alerts so that you're notified if your spending for that month goes above a certain amount. Number two, you could set a spending cap on your account that prevents your monthly bill from going over a certain amount. Number three, you should use tools like Cloudflare, AWS CloudFront, and the many other options that are available to you for protecting your resources. These tools can cache data so that you're taking the workload off of your resources, and they can also detect malicious traffic and completely block it from ever reaching your serverless resources. And number four, you can do this extra thing this I do. For almost all of my projects, at some point I use some kind of serverless service. However, I always include some kind of bottleneck in my infrastructure for the components of my project that are publicly accessible. You see, just because something can be infinitely scalable doesn't mean it needs to be. Including some kind of bottleneck at really high rates of traffic could still result in a larger than expected cloud hosting bill, but not one that's going to leave you selling your kidney on Facebook Marketplace at the end of the month. Let's imagine you're using one of those proper cloud providers and not one of those jazzed up marketing companies that to be honest, offer a really good developer experience. I'll give them that. But like we found out, can be so expensive. You could use a serverless service to host a public facing API that is connected to your front end. Technically, this API would be infinitely scalable, but you could prevent that by adding an API key with a rate limit that is set to maybe 200,000 operations per month. For a small project, this will be more than enough and you could increase it as your project grows. You could use the API key in your front end and it wouldn't matter if it became compromised because all we're actually really wanting here is the rate limit. So if someone tried to spam your endpoints, one, you could detect it, two, you could shut it down, and three, it wouldn't cost you much. I don't know how much it would cost with other cloud providers, but this is how much it would cost if you were using AWS to host an API and you had one million requests come through it. That's less than it would cost to host a server for a month. So like I say, if you're not doing that many requests, it's a perfect option for you. I also use a lot of serverless services. I also use a lot of serverless service serverless services serverless services. I also use a lot of serverless services for backend resources that I'm using within the rest of my applications. In fact, most of my message queues, automations, and other backend functionalities are serverless services because they're much cheaper at the scale that my business is at. Serverless computing is a great option for getting your projects live much quicker, but that doesn't mean that there are one click host my project option. You still need to do some work to configure the project and make sure that everything is secure. 